how the success that we're looking for resides outside of the parameters of comfort. Like the things that we want typically only come when we're stretching ourselves to be more than what we think we're capable of being. Right. I heard it said a long time ago, either someone is stretching your vision or they're choking your dream. Right. There is no in between. Family, welcome to the We Won't Quit podcast. I am your host, Mike Humes. Always excited anytime I have an opportunity to be with you. Uh, as you can see, just me today. And today I want to talk about uh, your comfort zone. Right. I want to talk about the power of your comfort zone. How often I have to stay outside of my comfort zone. And, and I shouldn't say how often we're outside of our comfort zone, but how the success that we're looking for resides outside of the parameters of comfort. Like the things that we want typically only come when we're stretching ourselves to be more than what we think we're capable of being. Right. I heard it said a long time ago, either someone is stretching your vision or they're choking your dream. Right. There is no in between. And oftentimes that's true for ourselves because we're the ones who we spend the most time with. So we've got to stretch ourselves more than having others to stretch us. And so when I look at any and everything that I've accomplished, when I looked at I look around at those who I'm surrounded by and the things that they've been able to accomplish, it's always the people who constantly remain uncomfortable, who are always working more harder on themselves, right, than they do on whether it's a business, whether it's, you know, if it's an athlete, they're, they're, they're always working to have better form. They're working to, uh, on their approach, right? You see someone like Serena Williams, 40 years of age, right? Looking, still looking to, to break records. She's constantly training, right? In every field, in every genre of music, everyone's constantly working to become better. Uh, and, what I've resolved, what I've learned from my experience over the years is it's just remaining uncomfortable. And the more uncomfortable you are, it seems like the more success you can have. I could be wrong, but that's just what I, I've learned over the years that I've got to continue to stretch myself. Again, this podcast is uncomfortable because it's just me and a microphone, right? And some cameras, and maybe a few people that are looking at me that y'all can't see right now. You don't see them, but, um, mm -hmm. but it's uncomfortable because it's different. It's not what I'm used to. Now, I, I, I was used to working by myself because, again, that was the field that I chose as a postal worker. It was just me and the dogs mainly out there, right? Um, and even that was uncomfortable being in a position where I knew I was the lowest man on the totem pole, right? So I couldn't control my day. I couldn't control my week. I couldn't control if I could spend time with family, when I could spend time with family. I had someone who was dictating all of those different things. I mean, from what time I would come to work, how long I would be there. Right. Mike, you look hungry. Go to lunch. <laughs> all right. Oh, your daughter's sick. No, I can't cover you today. You could take her to the doctor Friday. And it amazes me how I allow someone, at least where I am today, to dictate those things to me. I was more fearful of being uncomfortable and relying on my own self as an entrepreneur. But what I realized is now I'm more fearful of someone dictating to me all the things that no longer, that I can no longer tolerate. I hope that makes sense. So just understand that the success you're looking for it resides outside of your comfort zone, right? And I also had to resolve I was going to have to get away from those who, you know, who I had a, a common, get, get around those, I should say, who have a common future and away from those who had a, a, a common past. I had to connect with people who were going and growing in the direction I wanted to. And that was uncomfortable because oftentimes I didn't feel like I deserved to be in that type of room. I didn't deserve to be in that type of environment. They were very well spoken. I wasn't. They were dressed for the part. I was coming out in my posting uniform. And so it was uncomfortable. But by being uncomfortable, it forced me to 
work on me when no one else was looking. It forced me to read. It forced me to, to, to study. It forced me to do the things other than just watching sports, watching ESPN, right? Just playing, hanging out with the guys, whatever, whatever it is that, that we do that we consider comfortable. I had to get in an environment and start doing the things that were uncomfortable in order to have the lifestyle that I said I wanted, right? What's lifestyle? Life is something we all have, but style is the way that you choose to live it. And so it's one thing when we talk about what we want, but how, what are we willing to give up to go up? What are we really willing to sacrifice in 2022, right? This is the year of the entrepreneur. We've never had more entrepreneurs than we have right now. Pandemic hasn't stopped. Doesn't seem like it's slowing down. And so we're, we're constantly creating more and more entrepreneurs. More and more people are, are, are getting away from working for someone else and they're, and they're banking on themselves, right? They're betting on themselves. And in order to do that, you got to be uncomfortable, right? That's just it. You got to come out of your comfort zone. So listen, I was, I, I was in Cabo San Lucas. I'll never forget this trip that I was able to take to Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. I've been there several times. My favorite destination. It's my favorite vacation spot. Actually, there are a few of them, but I would say Cabo. Cabo because of this, because of this trip that uh, what happened in Cabo, right? I love the fish. I don't get to fish a lot, but I love to go fishing. And I'm in Cabo San Lucas. It's in March which is amazing. If you've never been to Cabo in March, just because of the weather, it was beautiful. Stayed at this, I think it was the Secrets Resort, so it was amazing, right? They had like jazz playing throughout the, the whole little resort. It wasn't packed. It was just minimal amount of people there. And so, I mean, you can have breakfast out on a terrace and you can see whales breaching out uh, into the ocean. It was It was amazing, right? And so... I go to catch up with some friends and it's this gentleman, right? Who, who is in the same business that I'm in, who I'd never met before real loud. He's uh, just, I can hear him, right? He's under the little, by the little bar area. And he's just, you know, telling jokes, has everybody cracking up and he recognizes me, comes over to me and he proceeds to tell me how my story has had an impact on him. Uh, and he tells me a story and the gentleman, uh, his name is Todd Allen. He's from Mississippi, right? Shout out to Todd Allen. And Ty says, listen, I just want to tell you how watching you as a father, he said, I know you're a single dad, I'm, a, I'm married, but uh, watching you as a father, how it impacted me. He said, I have a special needs daughter. He said, and uh, four months ago, I had open heart surgery. And he shows me this scar that's going down his chest. And he says, you know, uh, I didn't have insurance. I can't get life insurance, rather, is what he says. And he said, I'm in this business because this is my legacy to my daughter. And you helped to inspire me with that. And he said, even though I had open heart surgery, within four months, he had like eclipsed the pinnacle position in our company, like back to back to back months, which was, I mean, amazing amount of income he generated, obviously qualified for uh, this vacation that we were on. And he says, listen, what are you doing tomorrow? Let's go fishing. Look, I got plans. It's Cabo. I want to relax. All right. I'm get away from work. Uh, I think it was still snow happening in Maryland. And so, you know, back home. And so I'm like, eh, you know, you know, how somebody invites you somewhere and you really you don't know them. So you really don't know if you want to like hang out, designate a whole day like you can't go fishing quick. That's a that's a trip. Right. That takes some time. And he's like, no, listen, everything is already set up. Nothing you need to do. It's like everything's already set up. I've already paid for the boat. Uh, you know, if you, you want to put in, I already have four or five folks who are going, but we love to be able to just hang out, you know, kick it, talk. And, uh, and, and, I, and so I asked a friend of mine, right? I had a couple of buddies who were going. I said, y'all really getting on this boat, right? With this guy from Mississippi, right? <laughs> and and y'all, y'all know him. Like, do you know him like that? And he was like, yeah, man, we're going to hang out. We're going to get on the boat, right? You know, somebody on, from Mississippi invites you on a boat. That's yeah. Okay. It's a whole nother story, right? That goes over well when I'm on stage, but here's the thing. Um, I never forget. We get on the boat. We got, no, I got to get up super early and I'm hanging out the night before and I got to get up to get on this boat. Uh, where to catch a van to get, go to basically get on the boat. The captain is already there. Captain already has the first mate set up, right? Uh, it's beautiful. The scenery, 
And we start pushing out to the water. Look, lunch is already prepared. So it's really not much for us to do. Like, we just get to chill, converse, hang out, eat, drink, whatever you want to do. You look out, you see whales breaching around you, right? You, which is, if you've never seen whales breaching around you, you, you just, it's, it's an experience. So much so that we're like, hey, get us closer to it so we can get some pictures. And then you realize just how massive they are and just how they can just take the boat <laughs> right under you. And now you're trying to back them up like, hey, you know, that's a little too close. So all this is happening. And while this is happening, the first mate is setting up uh, all this artificial, um, you know, fish, right, that he has on the rods. And, you know, we have rods all over the place. And then you have the chair that you can sit in so that you can, you know, uh, prepare to uh, to catch the fish. And I'm like, hey, how often do you go out and do you actually catch something? And because I've had friends who've talked about being out there for 10 hours and nothing, not not a bite, especially when you're talking about, you know, tuna and these striped marlin and all that stuff that's that's out, in, you know, in, in, in this part of the, of the ocean. So I'm up first. And so I'm taking pictures. Look, I don't even have, I'm, I didn't come prepared to go fishing. I got my J's on, all right? I'm, I'm taking pictures. I'm, I'm enjoying myself. And all of a sudden, you know, grab the rod and I get a bite. I mean, this is huge too. And so this is when I realized I was out of my comfort zone. Because <laughs> I'm in the middle of the ocean and I'm strapped in the seat and I'm holding this rod and this massive marlin is on the other end of it trying to fight for his life. He's fighting to stay within his comfort zone. And if I'm not strapped in that seat, guess what? He's pulling me out of my comfort zone. And so this is where it gets good because they're trying to coach me through. And that's why you got to have got to have coaches, got to have people who know what they know. Right. And so they're telling me how to, you know, Reel down and pull back up and reel down, right? Don't look. I'm trying to look to see. And so we're going back and forth, back and forth, right? And I'm, I'm fighting. The Marlin is fighting. It's 20 minutes in. I am wore out. And they're still, you know, coaching me through. I got five friends coaching me through it. I'm sweating. And I'm ready to give up. And here's what I remember. I remember hearing them yell, hearing them scream, you know, like, they, you know, they, they, they throwing out some words uh, as they see the Marlin jump into the, to the air. I try to catch it. And they're like, no, keep your head down. Stay focused, like, on what you're doing. Like, you know, reel up, pull back, reel up, pull back, right? And, and I'm exhausted. But because I knew how close I was to the finish line, right, I wanted to keep going. Am I in my comfort zone? Absolutely not. I'm so uncomfortable at this moment. I wanted to have a drink, be back at the bar on land, right? Doing the things that I set, I thought the day was going to dictate. And that's not how my day went. And so finally, after like 20 some minutes, and I, I got it all on video as well. Um, you can see the Marlin like at the edge of the, of the, the boat. Now I'm that person that will watch National Geographic, the, not the, all the good stuff, but the ones when animals attack, like, you know, so I'd already seen a video like a month earlier of a Marlin almost spearing a guy jumping on the boat. So in my mind, that's what I'm thinking about, right? I'm thinking about what if this fish come, uh, right? This, this seven and a half foot Marlin come and, right? And go right through my hat, right? That's what I'm thinking about. And it's ironic because that's what stops most of us from success. We're always thinking about the negative versus the positive. We're thinking about a negative outcome versus a positive outcome. We're thinking about how the thing that, that we know can lead us to the lifestyle we want, we're constantly talking to the people who it didn't work well for. I literally watched the shows. I, I made a conscious decision to watch a show to show me how bad the situation could go versus showing me how positive or great the outcome could have been. Luckily, I still had people in my ear telling me, this is how it's going to happen. Just, just stay the course, stay the course. So long story longer, right? I get to the edge of the boat. The first mate's like, come on over. And he's we're, he's pulling the fish in. I mean, he's pulling the, the marlin in by his, you know, that, that long, uh, I don't know what you call that, right? It's like a sword, right? That's what it looks like. It's not a swordfish, but you know what I mean, right? 
And so he's pulling them up. I grab the fish, and I, and I guess I have to add a picture of this so you can uh, you can see it. And so I'm holding on to this this marlin, right, on the, uh, on the boat. Everybody's taking pictures. I'm exhausted. I'm smiling. Like I never in my life have I envisioned that this that I would like this was not how my trip was planned. But here's what I realized: people travel to that part of the country, and this is what Todd told me. He said, "Man, there's no better time, no better day." No better time of the year, no better day, no better place in the world than here to catch Marlin at this time. That's what he told me. And here's what I would tell you. There's no better time. In the midst of a pandemic, there's no better place than right now to become an entrepreneur, to live out your dream, to become the best version of yourself. One of the best experiences I've ever had. Taking pictures with, we end up catching three marlin that day, three, which is unheard of from what I hear. So I'm I'm on the plane flying back and I'm talking to a buddy who's sitting across from me and there's a gentleman sitting next to me and he says, "Hey, uh, is, was that a picture of a marlin uh, that you caught?" And I said, "Yeah, right? like like it's something I do often, right?" And uh, so he asked to take a look at it. And he says, you caught, you caught that here, right? And I say, yep, yeah, just, just a couple of days back. And he says, man, I've been fishing all over the world. And I've never, ever caught a marlin that looks like that. And I'm thinking to myself, this was something, an experience, because I didn't want to come out of my comfort zone, that I was never going to have a chance to experience. Simply because... I was limiting myself to other situations and, and thinking of different outcomes. And, and look, make this relative to whatever applies in your life, right? Oftentimes we, we, we fall victim to, as I said, thinking about how bad an outcome will be versus how powerful that outcome can be if we just live outside of our comfort zone and make a decision to do something. Now, look, there's a difference between trying to do something and training to do something, Todd Allen was trained in doing this. The captain was trained. He knew exactly where to go. I didn't have to tell him, hey, I think you should go further out over here, hook a left right <laughs> right by the well, and I'm sure there's going to be some tuna over there. No, the captain knew where to go. The first mate knew exactly what to use in order to attract what we were looking for. So whatever it is you're, you're looking to do, make sure you, you don't try it. Train for it. Work for it. It wasn't until I started working on myself that things started to happen, that life started to change. And, and more importantly, that I refused to quit. Quitting wasn't even an option once I started to train and understand what it was going to take to become better. You feel more comfortable. And so that's my story. It's amazing, right? We caught three that day. And the gentleman, on the, like I said, on the plane was like, man, I've been all over the world and I've never like ever had that experience. He started asking detailed questions. So like, you know, which direction was the boat, right? When you, what time exactly did you all go out? Right. You know, which, what type of ride, do you know what type of ride y'all used? Like he was trying to figure out what we did differently. And sometimes we compare ourselves to others thinking that they did something different. And just know your season's coming. You just got to go out there and you got to do it. Right. Just got to stick to it. That's it. So remain out of your comfort zone, family. Stretch yourself. Do the thing that you're scared to do this week. Make that a goal to stretch yourself to, to accomplish something. I know that's my goal for this week. Trust me, I have a I, I have a week coming up that is going to be uncomfortable. But what I know is going to come out of it on the other side of it. I will go through it 100 times over. I will go through it 100 times over because I know what's going to be on the other side of that. And it's not just going to be for me. So it'll be worth it. So who and what are you doing what you're doing for? What's your why? What drives you? What are your wants and reasons? Make sure you keep them, you hold them close to you. And no matter what you do, realize that the only way you can fail is to quit. But of course, it's impossible to stop a man or woman who will not quit. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share this video with others that you know. It's been another episode of the We Won't Quit podcast. Looking forward to being back next week with you, family. Take care. Take charge. Be blessed.
Hey family, you got to go to the website and check out Jack Design, just everyday creativity. I've known John Cook since he started this company at 14, but I've known him his entire life. He's been an artist his entire life. He's just 15 years of age. And Just Everyday Creativity or Jack Design isn't just an apparel company. It's an action. It's an attitude. It's an attribute. Because this young man puts his heart and soul into the apparel that we get a chance to wear. Whether it's the Empathy Collection. You feel me? I love that piece. Or whether it's the Masterpiece Collection, the one I'm rocking right now. Go check out the website. Don't forget to put Don't Quit 22 in at checkout and get a discount. Jack Design.